when we compare a thermal range expander to the traditional system it can save up to 60 percent of the cost isn't this amazing and in the entire life cycle up till 80 percent yes this is possible and a lot of engineers ask this question that when to use thermal range expander so i'll share a practical project example where we had used thermal range expander here we had to measure the pressure so we used a traditional pressure transmitter to measure the pressure but what had happened was the fluid was very viscous you could imagine something like honey and thus we could not measure with the traditional pressure transmitter and hence we had to go for another option so when the fluid is clogging we usually go for diaphragm seal systems so we use a diaphragm seal pressure transmitter to measure the pressure so that there is no fluid clogging the tubes or the pressure transmitter sensing element but what had happened was the fill fluid that we had initially used was silicon 200 which has a range of minus 45 degrees celsius to 205 degrees celsius however we realized that the process temperature was 350 degrees celsius and hence this is way beyond the range of silicon 200 which is one of the most common fill fluid that is used and in diaphragm seal systems so we had to go for another option that was option of silicon 705 which had the range from 20 degrees celsius to 370 degrees celsius and hence this was able to satisfy our process needs However, there was something strange which happened. The ambient conditions were too low. That is, it was minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is way below the silicon 705 range. So, it can only support up till 20 degrees Celsius and ours was minus 20 degrees Celsius. So, a difference of 40 degrees. Now, what to do? So, a question arises that why is this an issue why is the range for 705 only 20 degrees celsius the answer is viscosity when you cool a liquid its viscosity keeps increasing so if you see here the maximum limit that they have kept is 20 degrees celsius because if you compare the viscosity of silicon 200 which is 9.5 and the silicon 705 has the viscosity of 175 centi strokes can you imagine he has a huge difference and so uh, that also at 25 degrees celsius so if we'll cool it down to minus 20 degrees celsius the fluid will be so viscous that it will not be able to sense and transmit the pressure up till the pressure transmitter so what do we do in such a case here first we look at the traditional system the traditional system states that because the process temperature is so high it is 350 degrees celsius we have to go with silicon 705 but what about the ambient conditions so for that we do something called as heat tracing usually it is electrical heat tracing which is done so that the temperature can be maintained which has to be around somewhere about 20 degrees celsius so silicon 705 does not get clogged or becomes too viscous now there are few issues with heat tracing the first thing that happens is installation if you look at the installation you require a lot of things you require a controller the tracing it has to be properly done no cool spot should remain why because if you imagine that the ambient temperature is not always going to remain minus 20 it could be minus 10 minus 5 or sometimes even beyond that so you need a proper controller that can maintain a particular temperature second thing is the burnout a lot of my friends who work in plant have stated that a lot of times there are frequent issues of burnout that happens because if sometimes it gets overheated or there is certain power uh, shortages that happen the third issue that is usually come is maintenance if you look we have to supply power continuously to heat tracing so the maintenance issues and the causes also increases which includes the cost as well and the last thing what happens is reliability because you have heat tracing now there are a lot of multiple points of error if you don't get the correct reading to the pressure transmitter it could be because the heat tracing has failed or the power is not sufficiently given or the controller of heat tracing is not working so a lot of error points come into play in order to avoid these issues emerson has come up with a very innovative product where it uses the best of both the fill fluids and they've put an intermediate diaphragm in between 
So what happens is the first fill fluid is silicon 705, which has the temperature range from 20 degrees Celsius to 370 degrees Celsius. So this is used to satisfy the higher process temperatures. For our case, it was 350 degrees Celsius. And the next fill fluid, which is silicon 200, satisfies the ambient condition, which is minus 20 degrees Celsius. And the intermediate diaphragm seal in between keeps the pressure transferring from one side to the other side. If you're liking these videos, please subscribe and especially press bell icon so every Saturday you can receive a new video that I produce. Also, there is a free ebook that I've written for you. This ebook is on instrumentation standards, especially PIP standards. There have been almost 2000 plus downloads and engineers for companies like Shell, Dow, Technip, Wally have found it amazing. I think you would love this ebook. The link is given in the description below.